It happened on a day within 10 years after the fall of the Ming Dynasty when a loyalist who had once served in Yongli's court was navigating along the coast of the South China Sea that a typhoon overtook his ship and uh, blew it around in the street for some time. As the storm ceased, he realized that he had been washed ashore to an island. The island was Taiwan, of which by then a small area of the south end had been effectively colonized by the Dutch since 1624, controlled from the castles, Zirandia and Sakam. The man who so cast to it was Sun Guangwen, and the year was roughly equivalent to 1654. Once on Taiwan, Sun Guangwen lived in obscurity for many years until Koxinga, Zhen Chen Gong, um, seized the island from the colonists in 1662. And this, and this, I'm sorry, and discovered, uh, discovered, uh, I think the, the light, <laughs> and discovered his identity. Sun Guang was then able to conduct classes in the villages in Taiwan, teaching the youngsters, including Chinese and Aborigines, to read and would also offer med medicinal herbs to the sick who came for his help. He continued to write poetry steadfastly through old age, and unlike those in other cases, most of his work survived wars and natural catastrophes into the modern age. In fact, the Willem Miller's collection of his work is still in print, at least uh, the latest uh, edition published in Taipei by the Ninbo uh, Tongxianghui in 1977, which is in turn based on an, uh, one edition prepared by the, by the famous scholar Quan Zhu Wang in the 18th century. The collected work of Zheng Guangwen is constituted of a book called Typographical Notes on Taiwan, and another called uh, Miscellaneous Flora, and a third called A Living in Exile, and another one called uh, Rhapsody on Taiwan, Taiwan Fu, and uh, a variety of prose essays plus several duens of poetry. This, as we recall today, marks the significant beginnings of Taiwanese literature. Uh, they include political transitions, a typhoon, the strange big island, aborigines, European sellers and poetry. When we take a good look at what has and hasn't changed over these eras, holding the so-called Taiwanese style of the past 60 years alongside that of traditional China, we discover that especially in terms of the way it has freely chosen among stylistic elements and incorporated multitude of subjects, Taiwan's modern poetry has not only inherited and observed elements of China's tradition, it has also been able to extricate itself from China's turmoil by passing old customs, exercising choices, and affirming the positive. Whenever local culture guides our thinking and 
anticipate an artistic creation. It strengthens itself through its inclusiveness. All of this is connected to Taiwan's geography and history, as it has been for nearly 400 years. So-called local culture, when investigated as a literary source, may be narrow in scope. But when we focus on its wellsprings, accumulation, and transformations, we find we are able to follow the river back to its sources to the time of Sen Guangwen. This was precisely the point at which poetic creation in the medium of Chinese language made its appearance in Taiwan. In 1680, Taiwan came under the control of the Manchu Qin Dynasty. And for over 200 years, officers posted to Taiwan composed a great deal of poetry. These poems expressed the sense of disappointment because they were demoted to Taiwan, and failure experienced by demoted and exiled officers, it was characteristic of them to make fun of the, of the landscape and insult local customs. It was only after the time of the reign of the Qianlong Emperor in the 18th century that one finally saw candidates for the imperial examinations from Taiwan traveling back and forth across the streets. It was they who gradually and over time came to write poetry in praise of Taiwan which they saw as their home the first time. Take, for example, the lines from the poem, Mooring at Luar Man at Night. Luar Man is in today's Tainan County. By a student, Ju Ren, from Taiwan County, Chen Hui, that's his name, the poem, two lines, go like this. Wavering, wavering a traveler's thoughts. In dreams of return, he, call, he recalls his home. During the period of Japanese rule, the study of poetry in Taiwan flourished. There were a total of 66 poetry societies scattered, scattered all around over the island, as far as pescatories, whose members would chant poems together and encourage one another. At the same time, there, were, there, there also appeared some talented and passionate young ideal, idealists who began writing new poetry in free verse form, voicing their resistance and criticism in colloquial Chinese, Bai Hua free verse, against the Japanese administration. Freely expression that what was in their hearts and dying bare their consciousness, they became a threat to the colonial authorities who repeatedly took sanctions against them under a strict system of censorship. After the 1937 invasion of northern China by Japanese forces, the government general in Taipei, uh, the governor general in Taipei, barred all Taiwanese from publishing in Chinese language, forcing them to begin writing in Japanese, or else stop writing altogether. In the following decade, young Taiwanese published some outstanding avant-garde new style poems some of which succeeded in using language to seek the beauty and wonder of the new zeitgeist. These poets were in no way inferior either to their European, American, or Japanese contemporaries or to writers of their generation in China. Following this thread, we can see 
that this historical legacy is one of the sources of modern poetry in Taiwan. New generations of poets have applied themselves unflaggingly to this latent artistic spirit, opening it up for the wholeheartedly disclaiming to the world and imbibing the ideas and techniques of Western modernism, while also integrating the essence of traditional poetry. For the past half century, we have seen the way Taiwanese poets have created a large uh, place for themselves in the space between what is chosen and what is left behind. The features of traditional Chinese poetry and the style of Western literature have been transformed in, in our modern environment. And yet throughout the spirit and feeling of these, po these works have cleaved to the portrayal of realities and everyday truths. The nearly 400 years of development in Taiwan have given birth to this new poetry of ours, distinctly different from that found in other cultural locales, and it is always fresh and vital also because its surroundings are in constant flux. Holding fast to a modernity that can't be wrapped away it refuses to let itself become mild in set responses. It is humanistic, cosmopolitan, in a way that transcends nationalism. And while it embraces nature, it also yearns for the epitome of abstract beauty. At times, our modern poetry displays a fondness for tumultuous images of the old and new Taiwan. Yet it is happy to make traditional China its cultural referent, acknowledging its enduring love and admiration. It uses traditional China as the foundation for literary creation, a foundation that has contributed its written language imagery and allusions, and thus presides over and guides the imagination. We use the Chinese language, the written language, precisely to create Taiwanese literature. Thank you.